Please join me as I prepare a delicious meal featuring cashews with their tasty flavor and creamy texture. I make a delectable meal that you're going to love because today I'm nuts about nut loaf. Jazzy, you're going to be healthy with the Jazzy Vegetarian. Jazzy's so snazzy. We're going to cook something healthy and light. Should it do it? Do it? Do it? So join me in the kitchen right now. We're gonna cook something healthy and like that's right. Today I'm preparing a delightful dinner that features my hearty cashew and quinoa nut loaf, paired with savory paprika and rosemary roasted red potatoes. Now on the side, I'm gonna serve crisp asparagus topped with my mouth-watering jazzy version of hollandaise sauce. How am I going to do that, you may ask. A quick, satisfying dessert offers my quick, flourless oatmeal lace cookies. So let's get cooking. Today, I'm nuts. About nut loaf, that is. Yes, I just love this loaf that I'm going to make for you today. Something a little bit different. It's cashew and quinoa loaf. So we're going to be using raw cashews in this recipe today. And we're also going to be using one of my very favorite things to cook with, and that is quinoa. And what I've done is I have taken half a cup of quinoa and you add one cup of vegetable broth and you put it in a saucepan and you cook it for 17 minutes and it comes out beautiful just like this. So what we're going to start with is two slices of sprouted whole grain bread. Just break that into the blender. You'll see at the end it's really so festive. Like my friend Suzanne says, there's a little surprise inside. Okie dokie, and here we go. We're just going to make really coarse breadcrumbs. Fabulous. That's absolutely perfect. Let's put that into our mixing bowl. What would cashew loaf be without cashews? I'm using one and a half cups of raw cashews. And one and a half cups is going to grind down to, oh, about one and a quarter cups. And that's what you're going to use in this loaf. So just dump them right in. Just about there. Ooh, that is perfect. Take a look at that. See how I've got some coarse ground pieces, but the rest of it is very finely ground. That's how you want it to be. So here I've got about one cup of packed fresh breadcrumbs and about one and a quarter cups of ground cashews. Now for my quinoa. I'm adding one and a half cups of cooked quinoa. And I get my trusty potato masher. You know how I love potato mashers. And we're just going to mash that quinoa up just a little bit. Okay. We've just broken down that quinoa a little bit so you don't have big chunks of quinoa in your loaf. Toss that right in there. Mm. Smells and looks good already. So let me set that all aside because right now I have one cup of diced onion and to that I'm going to add about two teaspoons of veggie broth just to get it started and just one teaspoon of extra virgin olive oil. If you don't want to use the oil, you really don't have to. You can just use the veggie broth if you like. So we're going to get those going, get them sizzling hot. And I'm going to add to that some organic tamari. Oh, isn't that pretty already? There we go. All right, there we go. I've let that simmer for about five minutes. I added a little bit more vegetable broth as it gets dry. Just add oh, about a tablespoon of veggie broth at a time because you don't want it to get dry. So it's time for me to mince my garlic. Okay, beautiful. Mm. Wow, that smells good. All right, this is moving along nicely here. And we're going to add our garlic in there. 
let that go for just about a minute. And then I'm going to take it off the heat and set it aside, let it cool down a little bit before I add it to my loaf. And now we're going to zest our lemon. I like to do it just like this. And we're going to zest one whole lemon. Any kind of lemon is fine and dandy do. But I have this beautiful Meyer lemon. Wow. And then just chop up that zest. Let's put that into our little mixing bowl. And then I'm going to use a half cup of almond milk, a half a teaspoon of sea salt. But I like it to be nice and peppery. And then this is really what gives a delicate sweet taste to this loaf. Half of a teaspoon of dried marjoram. That is it. Whisk it all together. Okay. Now, set that aside for a moment while I get my onions and my garlic into the loaf. I'm gonna saute some more onions and a little bit of sweet red pepper for the filling. So let me just get that Going. I'm going to deglaze the pan with a little bit of that vegetable broth. There. That's good. And I'm going to start here with a half a cup of diced onion. And I'm going to add just a tad more olive oil. Once again, if you want to keep it oil-free, you don't have to use the olive oil in this recipe. And maybe a tablespoon of the veggie broth. The veggie broth, you want to add a little bit at a time as you're sauteing with it because you don't want your ingredients to get watery, yet you don't want them to get dry. I'm going to let that go for about a minute before I add my red peppers. Let's get back to my loaf. Here's my last layer of flavor in this, and it's my almond milk. Toss that about. All right, let me test it. Here's the only way you can do it. You got to take your bracelet off, take your ring off, and we're going to have to form this loaf a little bit with our hands. Let's feel if it's going to hold together. You see that's still a little bit too moist there, and that's where the wheat germ is going to come in. And let me just wash off my hands here. I can smell my onion sizzling. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that's going. Woo-wee! Smells good. Yummy. Mmm. Okay, I'm getting excited. My mouth is starting to water. And to that, I'm going to add one cup of diced sweet red pepper. Now, as you can see, it's a little dry on the bottom. Just a tad more of that vegetable broth. Give it a little bit of moisture. And also that vegetable broth gives flavor. Layer upon layer of flavor. You know how often I talk about that. We just have to layer those flavors in plant-based cooking because that is what makes it so delicious. Let me grab my wheat germ. So let's add about five tablespoons or so of wheat germ to this. That'll help to hold it together. Now, what am I looking for here, you say? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you right now. I can tell this is gonna be the right consistency. As I pull this together with my hands, it stays. See how I put that together? It stays. It doesn't fall apart like it was a few minutes ago. So you know you've got the right consistency to this when it almost feels kind of like a pseudo dough, I guess is the best way to describe it. And you can see already that's going to hold nicely into a loaf. And I'm going to go get my loaf pan because we're going to start assembling the loaf. This is the exciting part. Yay, oh yay, oh yay. Now this is what I've done. I've taken a nine by five loaf pan, and as you see, I've lined it with unbleached parchment paper, and I have a little overhang on each side that's quite generous. You're going to see why. And I'm gonna take half of my nut loaf mixture, really with your hands. It's the only way you can do it. You get nice and messy, because that's part of the fun of cooking. So you can see what I'm doing here. I'm pressing this loaf. Press it very, very firmly because that's what's going to hold this loaf together. That's the first layer of our very jazz-alicious cashew quinoa loaf. Gotta wash my hands. Okie dokie. So now you're saying, well, what are you going to do with this stuff? Here are my sautéed peppers, and to this I'm going to add, oh, about 
an eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt, fresh ground pepper. I'm going to add a half a cup of vegan cheese. But if you have a hard time finding vegan cheese or if you don't like vegan cheese, you can actually leave it out. But it really adds a nice little special surprise in the center of this loaf that I really love. You're just going to toss that about all together. All right, we're going to put it all together now. Bring my loaf back over. I've got my one layer of my cashew and quinoa mixture. And on top of that, you're just going to layer your vegan cheese, your peppers, and your onions. Now we're just going to smooth this out in a nice layer, pressing it down as we go. Okay, that's fantastic. Then grab it together like this. I'm going to put this layer right on top. I have preheated the oven to 400 degrees. And we're just going to smooth this over the top of that vegan cheese. As you go, pressing down. That is so perfect. The reason I had you leave these little wings on your unbleached parchment paper is we're going to fold them over the top of the loaf. Just like that. Press them down. That way we're going to be keeping all the moisture in. All righty, cashew quinoa loaf, I just love it. And next up, inspired by grandma's recipe, paprika and rosemary roasted red potatoes, yummy -o. I just love it. So let's prepare them now. Now this is a take on my grandma's potatoes when I was a little girl. She always made these fabulous rosemary infused potatoes. She would serve it to us at Sunday night dinner. And she would always do it when we came over because my grandpa did not like rosemary. So she could never make that for herself during the week. So through the years I've kind of come up with a little twist. Here's how it goes. First of all I have six red potatoes. You can really cut them however you like. If for some reason you or your family does not like rosemary, like Grandpa did not like rosemary, you can use basil, Italian seasoning, oregano. Just swap it out to give the taste that you and your family really love. So to this, what would paprika potatoes be without paprika? That's a little uh, tongue twister. And I've got a half a teaspoon of paprika. Now our rosemary. One teaspoon of dried crushed rosemary. Then a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. A half a teaspoon of sea salt. Freshly ground pepper. Let's check on our cashew rose. Yep, yep, that's nice. That's what you wanna see. We're going to unwrap it now, kind of like a little present. It was steamy, steamy, steamy hot. We're gonna pop this back in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes till it gets all golden brown on top. I'm gonna set the timer because if I don't set the timer, I won't remember to take it out of the oven. So here we are. Look at how pretty that is. There's a lot of beautiful colors in this dinner. And in fact, every time I'm serving a delectable dinner, I try to keep in mind the compliments of all the different colors of the rainbows. Because once you put that on a plate, it's gonna make your vegan meal really, really appetizing. And even if you're serving non-vegetarians, they're gonna absolutely love it from first sight. So there we go. All right, about two teaspoons of olive oil. Because what's gonna happen is just a little tiny bit of that olive oil, that rosemary, and that paprika coat each piece of these fabulous potatoes. All right, let's get this on our baking sheet. Now I've prepped my baking sheet with a piece of unbleached parchment paper. So just dump them all on there, toss them about. And you kind of want to get them in an even layer like I'm doing here. Fabuloso. There you have it. Ready to go into the oven. Going to take about 50 minutes to an hour in a 400 degree oven. My paprika and rosemary roasted red potatoes. Next up, you're not going to believe it, but I'm going to make some really delectable cookies, but I'm not going to use any flour. So stick around. Oh. 
So all we're going to start with is one cup of O's shaped cereal. There we go. Oh, that's what you want. A few little chunky chunks in there, but kind of like a flour consistency. Now we're going to add one cup of rolled oats. You don't want the instant oats for this. You do want to use the rolled oats. One teaspoon of baking powder. About a half a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. An eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt. A third of a cup of raisins. A third of a cup of vegan dark chocolate chips. Toss it about. All right, that's fine and dandy. Now we're going to put together the other components of this, the sweeteners and such. And what I'm starting off here with, a third of a cup of softened vegan margarine. Three tablespoons of brown sugar. You can also use maple sugar if you like. Three tablespoons of a beautiful dark organic molasses. Mm, 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 mm. And then half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. If you can smell this, oh my goodness gracious, this smells absolutely fabulous. And now we're going to put in our margarine, our molasses, our brown sugar, our vanilla. Good. Now we're just going to toss it all around. That's a really crumbly mixture, but you're going to see it's going to kind of all come together. We're going to put these into a 350 degree oven all for about 10 to 12 minutes until you see that they've kind of spread apart. Take the last bit with my fingers. We're not quite done yet. So hold horses. I wonder where they came up with that saying, hold your horses. Maybe when people were walking across the street when there weren't lights, they said, hold your horses. I don't know. We'll have to check on that, won't we? All right, now we're going to kind of compress them down. So as they melt and the chocolate melts and that vegan margarine melts, that's what's going to, as it cools later on, hold these cookies together. Press them all down into your cookie-licious shapes. We're good to go. I'm going to pop these in the oven for about 10 to 12 minutes. So now it's time to unveil the cashew quinoa loaf. There we go. Now, put a plate over top of it. Well, you've done this before. Flip it over. I heard it go. Place it on the plate like that. Oh, yeah. I can tell it's perfect. And then you're just going to carefully unpeel this paper to reveal your beautiful, beautiful loaf. It's almost like a terrine. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? You see how I've got a little bit of that vegan cheese and those peppers peeking through. That's just what we want. And a beautiful golden brown on the top. So now let's get to our asparagus. Asparagus with vegan hollandaise sauce. How's she gonna do that, you ask? I just wanna give a little green entertaining tip. If you're giving a luncheon or a dinner, having people over, you just wanna decorate, this is a great way to do it. In this case, I have a pretty red glass with the asparagus. You could also do this at holiday time. You see the green and the red would be really nice. In the spring, perhaps you'd put it in a clear crystal glass or a blue glass. You get the idea. But if you do several of these and put them all along the center of your table, what a pretty centerpiece that makes. So that's a great tip, jazzy style. So I have this beautiful asparagus. I've just popped off the ends and I'm going to put them into a steamer, kind of lay the asparagus down flat. And it steams really easily and really perfectly. All right, so I'm going to let that steam. So let's do this jazzy vegetarian vegan hollandaise sauce. We're going to start off with about seven, eight ounces or so of drained soft silken tofu. I've also used regular soft tofu with this fine and dandy. A quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. 
I'm going to use about three tablespoons of fresh lemon juice. And that's something that you do find in a regular hollandaise sauce. Three tablespoons of lemon juice. It's going to be just about right. Perfect. And then we're just going to blend this on a low speed until it's kind of creamy and fluffy like hollandaise sauce would be. That's the perfect consistency that we're looking for. That looks like hollandaise. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get that all into a small pan. I'm going to heat it up. And then I'm going to pour it over my asparagus. And I'm going to plate this baby up for you. Wow. Doesn't that look absolutely delectable? Ooh, they're perfectly done. Just take a taste. Mmm. Wow. That is so good. Delicate, lemony, and nice and smooth and silky. And now for my magnificent paprika and rosemary roasted potatoes. I'll just take a bite. They just explode in your mouth. Nice little crispy crust on the outside. That rosemary taste, that garlic, and a little bit of that paprika. Yummy, yum, 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 yum. Now, for the star of the show. That's a little bit of heaven right there in a nut loaf. It has such a delicate taste. That little bit of marjoram that's in there just spices it ever so lightly. And that delicious quinoa and the cashews and a little bit of that wheat germ and the breadcrumbs all come together to make a completely delectable loaf. And when you take a bite, that little surprise pop of those red peppers and that vegan cheese right in the middle. That makes it just taste so good. Cashew, quinoa, loaf. Now, last but not least, my fun little flourless oatmeal cookies. Yummy. Gotta do a little cookie dance, yeah. Cookie dance, cookie dance. Mmm. Those oats, those chocolate chips, and they all crisp up. All oh, those are so good. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. So the next time you're looking to jazz up your dinner menu, please give these fabulous recipes from today's show a try. So until next time, be happy and be healthy and be well from the Jazzy Vegetarian. Visit our website at jazzyvegetarian.com to connect with Laura, see videos, find your favorite recipes, and more. Follow Laura on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Laura Theodore's Jazzy Vegetarian Classics features recipes from this series, and it's available for $26.95. Jazzy Vegetarian, a collection of favorite recipes, is available for $24.95. A set of both cookbooks is available for $44.95. For information or to order, visit jazzyvegetarian.com. Organic love 100% natural Yes it is now Organic love I've got no additives Or no preservatives It's real intuitive It's downright primitive Organic love Organic love Is 100% natural Yes it is now